All right, Trip, so we have walked around here. We've seen all kinds of vehicles, right? What's your favorite one so far? Well, a couple of the smaller units that I could use to get up to our mountain, I would love to get access to. But, you know, what's weird is that you've got so much creativity, so many people who are so smart. And, you know, a lot of them might have a day job during the week, but their passion is Utah and being outdoors. And it's fun to see these guys in action and gals. It really is. And they talk about the trails aren't just for, for four-wheel drive trucks or for side-by-side, -side, just for people with horses or people who like to hike. I talked to Big Sarge. He told me all about it, so let's go check that out. I'm an old Army sergeant, hence the nickname the Big Sarge. And uh, so uh, I've worked for about 25 years now on the board of directors of the Utah Four-Wheel Drive Association. And it's, it's kind of hard keeping public lands public here in the state of Utah. You, you've got organizations like uh, Sierra Club that have 2.4 million people that join the Sierra Club. Well, because it's cool. Give them, give them a donation, and they don't really care about anything. Uh, but we, as off-roaders, we have to unite. That's what this is all about this weekend. Is That's why we have ATVs in here. We have single track in here. We have uh, Jeeps in here. And even if you're a horsebacker, we'd love to have you in here as a horse guy. It's, it's all about keeping public lands public and keeping access to public lands. That's that's the most important thing. Until until today, I honestly had no idea that it was that, that there is that big of an issue with them closing down public lands for people to use. Well, you have the Forestry Service to just uh, administrative law kind of in my in my world is just, mm, is a horrible thing. Okay, and and they'll just say, well, we're going to close this off because it's got a little rutted. Well, <laughs> some of us really like it when it gets hard. Yeah. I mean, okay, so you know, don't take your you know, Ford Explorer with no lift and running boards on it if the road doesn't look like you should go on it. Yeah. I mean, face well, it. common I'm, sense is hard to come by anymore. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, use some common sense on what you're doing. You know, pack out more than you pack in. You, you're going down a trail and you find a trashed out campsite. Go in there, clean it up. You know, carry some plastic bags in a, in your in your rig. Uh, get a trash room, mount it to your spare tire on the back. Uh, you know, do something though. Just don't use the trails. You know, you got to take care of the lands. You got to put in at least as much as you take out of the land. And what I mean by that is, you spend two or three hours or a weekend out there. You know, having fun with the family. Take a weekend, go out there, and do a service project. All right, can I get your name? My name is Colton Rogers. And Colton, what is it that you're uh, you're down here with the Forest Service? What exactly is it that you guys are doing? We're talking to folks at the expo about uh, responsible recreation pertaining to four-wheel drives. Um, we're talking to them about the areas that they can ride their four-wheel drive vehicles in the Pleasant Grove and Spanish Fork Ranger districts. Our key messages today mainly focus on traveling on the right routes, uh, not going off designated routes, and also traveling during the right time of year. That means making sure the trails are dry um, and that you're not leaving a huge impact. These are some of the main things people can do to keep the access to the public lands. I see these maps. You know, you, you, when you go up in the mountains, you see like all these trails that dog here and there and that. How do you keep track of all those? Yeah, so we go through an annual review of these maps, um, and we have a, a great system set up in the Forest Service to track these. Uh, it is a lot to take on at times, but fortunately we have four-wheel drive groups that have adopted some of these routes. And so there are eyes and ears out in the field. We also have our, our seasonal crews that get out there in the field. And you reference these maps. These are great documents to help the users know where they can go and when they can go there. This narrows it down really to the width of the vehicle that can go on that route. So they're super useful for the public. Also, you don't take some great big giant pickup when only a side-by-side -side will fit down the trail. Exactly. Because that's exactly what I would do. I'd have a great <laughs> big truck and then I'd be stuck. Yeah, we'd, uh, we'd find you and, and we'd help educate you. We'd help you understand where you can go. All righty, well, thank you so much for talking with me. I appreciate your thank time. Thank you, guys.